Today on City Line, it's our spring special and we're starting in the kitchen. I love the recipe because it just showcases everything asparagus has to offer. Then tips and tricks to create your own harvest. So I'm going to show people how to grow food in their own homes, whether it's a condo balcony, whether it's a backyard garden, whether it's a raised bed, but we're going to do it based on companion planting. Grow your own food and save money. For people today to eat healthy, the prices are astronomical. And later, a fun, all-natural spring DIY project. So what I have today is ideas of how we can decorate eggs if yeah. you want to give them as gifts to hit off spring. Nice. If it's something we want to do, you know, during Earth Hour. Okay. Or if it's just something you want to get ready for, for Easter. But let's do it Beautiful. as sustainable as possible. It's City Live with Tracy Moore. visit me. So it's getting warm out. How do we feel about the weather? Yeah! Right? Spring has sprung. Happy first day of spring, everyone. We have a fresh and colorful show today for you. I thought I would start with the outfit. So the audience said they like it. Okay, let's get into the food. I'm dressed like an orange, but we're going to talk about asparagus. So it's one of the first plants to greet us in springtime and greeting us in the kitchen is Chef Randy Feltis. Give him some love. Thank you, Tracy. All right, Chef. What are we making today and why do you love this recipe? Oh, Tracy, this is a glorious recipe. We are doing asparagus two ways with a rose goat cheese cream. I love the recipe because it just showcases everything asparagus has to offer. I heard asparagus, but I mostly heard rosé. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get to that. We'll I just, get to that. I heard them both. We'll, and also the goat cheese cream. That sounds fantastic. Cream is very interesting, mm. too. I got to ask you first off, are you a yeah. thin asparagus girl or a thick asparagus girl? I like the thick asparagus, actually. I feel like you're just getting more when you get the bundle of asparagus and they're like thick stalks. You're not into the thick? I, I, you know, chefs like dainty things. Oh, So right. I like it thin. But hear me out. There's yeah. places for both. They're hard to, it's hard to put the fork into the thin ones. And, and the... Uh, here's the other thing. The thin yeah. ones, I don't mind if they're slightly overcooked. I, it's the only vegetable I normally like my veggies really crunchy. Well, this is shocking but to me right now. But asparagus, I'm okay with a little bit of like, you a know, little a little soggy. Yeah, a little, little soggy. spin it like asparagus and pop it in or okay. like spaghetti away we go. All right, all right. So what we're going to do is start with some thin stuff today and then yeah. we're going to get to the thicker stuff. All right. So in a cast iron pan, this is a beautiful way to do any kind of asparagus at home because you can keep your eye on it. When oh. it's the beginning of asparagus season, though, yes. chef, are they usually thinner or are they usually thicker? They're just picking them the way they come up. Whatever they, they whatever, whatever they, they are, they come are. Up, right? get them out and get but them into so the grocery store. So normally the first batch is obviously Ooh. a little bit thinner, and then once they have like the, the turnover, it gets a little thicker, right? Got it. There you go. And we actually have an asparagus farm just down the road from us, and so whenever asparagus That's comes you. in, we celebrate and we eat asparagus every day, all day, for like three <laughs> or four weeks until you get to the point where you're like, I can't eat any more asparagus. I am right. done with asparagus season. Yes. And that's when you know it's time to move on to like corn and other things. Let's go get another vegetable because the bathroom smells like asparagus. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't it's think we were going to bring that it. up. I didn't think we were going to bring that it's up, but that's fine. part of the joy, that right? Is the cool. asparagus yes. goes right through the body. Uh, you know, and then it's like, there it is in the I, toilet. I thought I was the only one, and then other people oh, start talking about it. So Apparently, many. it's everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, asparagus pee is a thing. Move them right along. <laughs> okay. Um, so, you've got, so you've got a nice hot pan yep. uh, when you put the asparagus down. Some really good olive oil. And you're going to keep this very simple and fresh because... The, the asparagus speaks for themselves. It's just going to char in there. It's just going right? to cook away. We're going to get the goat cheese cream rocking. Let's do that. Okay. So a couple logs of goat cheese here, Tracy. Very nice. Treat your goat cheese the same way you want to treat yourself. Oh, boozy. Springtime hits. Okay. I want some rosé. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just going to sprinkle in. Oh, are you yeah. feeling that in your throat a little bit? A little bit, yeah. <coughs> we're fine. We're fine. We're professionals. You want a little salt? You want a salt? Well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> You let me know oh, you need it's a so <laughs> Is that rosé you have? Um, okay, so we put the rosé in the, the, in rose the, goat, in cheese. the goat cheese. And then two oh, nice. teaspoons of honey. 
So just a little sweetness, yeah, you know, just lovely. a little something, something. And then what you're going to do... Should I stand behind you for this one? I don't or? know. I could have got a deeper bowl, you know, but we'll make this work. He's a now, bro. He knows what's up. Oh, okay. I'll just be here. <laughs> I you have know to what? return the clothes. It doesn't make the greatest TV anyways, but trust me, that takes yeah. like two or three minutes, and it's going to come out pillowy, soft, and smooth. Luckily, Tracy. Oh, yes. <laughs> he thought ahead. I did my mise en place, you know? Yeah. So then you've got this glorious... A little bit. Can I have the back of your hand? Just give me the yeah, I was going to say, you need to see the texture of this because it's it's whipped so nicely. Um, yeah, it's it's like... super duper light. And you would do that, you would do that with your hand mixer. You don't need to go put it in the in the big old uh, stand mixer or anything you like that, right? You can do it a food processor if you want, or you can even do it by hand if you're feeling really ambitious. Or you have a teenager who's, you know, working hard at home, wants right. to get into it. There Bicep you go. Bicep workout. Okay, so our little asparagus is cooking down perfectly here. Beautiful. And then we're going to get our fat stuff okay. right here. And, you know, you can eat asparagus raw. It's so a glorious thing. So you grew thing. up doing this. So we had asparagus growing right on our driveway. Yeah. And we'd, we'd go out there and we'd, like, break it off, you know, the, the woody stuff, and just, like, That's good. hammer it down. It's fantastic. That's a good snack. It's crispy. It's delicious, right? Yeah. So I kind of wanted to showcase a salad that would kind of showcase that a little bit. Okay. We just take a vegetable peeler. Yeah. And we were going to, well, that one didn't work out so well. <laughs> We're just gonna well, a little again. brittle, and then we're just gonna make <laughs> ribbons like that. Oh, that's nice. Right, yeah. and we're just gonna go, and it's just gonna give us a nice little texture. And at the end of the day, you'll be left with a bunch of these stalks, right? What are you gonna do with those stalks? We make soup, we'll make veggie broth, yeah. we'll make all kinds of anything. Beautiful. Don't you don't need to throw anything out. I mean, later in the show, you'll see Julia grieve, and she will agree. Everything can be reused, right? Always reuse everything. And yeah. asparagus soup is another one of those things. If you're going to eat it every day, you want to keep mixing it up. <coughs> Sorry, that was no, me. No, I'm okay. I just, I, I really do have a tickle. I'm going to get a glass and... You get a glass. I'm going to keep going here. Ooh. So... Yeah, I can taste it in my throat. How many pieces of asparagus do you normally go, I say, as much as you got? Oh, so there's no rules. It's there's a no rules. We're going to pile that up mm. right in there like that. Unfortunately, <clears throat> the faucet isn't working, so... <laughs> I think oh, there's a conspiracy theory all the way along. It's better now. It's the Hampton water. People like it's that better. stuff. Yeah. It's amazing. So you does just, it feel like spring? Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it's, feeling, it's feeling super springy. Oh, Julia, come on in here. I'm so sorry to ignore you. I got into the rosé. Oh my god, I'll have some of that. Yeah, oh I'm gonna pour you a bit. So I wanted you to come in here um, to maybe try some of this. Look at the freshness of oh this my gosh, salad. I love it. Right. I love Are you it. an asparagus girl? I am. I oh, love you do. asparagus. What? Good. Absolutely. Well, because you're here, you're not just going to get to eat something. You got to get to work. So there's a lemon over there that's just cut up. Oh. Okay. Just give that a nice little, like you know, bartender squeezy squeeze on top of there. Nice. Okay, I've got it. All right. Let's I'm see what assuming you got. we're out of time, Cass. Yeah. We are not quite <laughs> They're trying time. to wrap us up, Randy. Oh, but there's also pine nuts. Oh, we, right. So he toasted some off. pine nuts. Toast some pineapple stuff. We don't want to get too complicated, but you yeah. want some oh crunch. God, you that want good? some smooth. Uh, you want some see. asparagus. Very nice. And you know what you else want to do? What you do you want to take do? a bite? Get in there. Just oh get God, right I in the asparagus. You have no Dip utensils. it in the cream oh, and so give it a go. It's on the other side. Or you can just grab an asparagus and put it in the yeah! <laughs> Don't have to call me one to eat with my hands. Randy, oh, well done. Oh, great. You got to taste I'll it. eat this during break. We've oh got God. that recipe at CityLine.tv. He's going to come back. So we've talked about asparagus. We're going to talk about butter. But right now we're going to break. we got more coming up, everybody. <laughs> Stay with us. Coming up, what is companion planting and how can it help your garden? You properly companion plant, mm -hmm. as in put plants together that live in a symbiotic relationship, yeah. they will do better with less. Of groceries through the roof and more and more of us have been turning to growing our own food which is great so we've got ways to make sure you have the biggest harvest in your backyard we got Carson Arthur Yay, thank you. we dragged him <laughs> from his haven 
way outside of the city and brought you in here and I have not seen you in person in months and months. It's been really remote. So I'm just so happy to see you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. And I'll be honest, the reason I'm here is this is such an important cause to me. Like this mm. vegetable basket medley that we see here yeah. costs over $150. For people today to eat healthy, the prices are astronomical yeah. and plant-based diets are one of the biggest trends around the world. More and more people, we were just talking about yeah. it, more people are investing in this than ever before. Mm -hmm. But we're doing it wrong. We could do okay. it better. So I'm going to show people how to grow food in their own homes, whether it's a condo balcony, whether it's a backyard garden, whether it's a raised bed. But we're going to do it based on companion planting. Okay. Who wants to hang out together in the garden? Because if you properly companion plant, mm -hmm. as in put plants together that live in a symbiotic relationship, yeah. they will do better with less. Okay, All right. so companion planting is putting them together. They help each other out. It's a beautiful relationship. Exactly, like us on the stage, right? That's exactly, right. that's it. So let's start with the Mexican fiesta. Okay. Now I say this because it's really easy for people to remember what kind of food they get at a Mexican restaurant. Yes. So Mexican cuisine actually is all companion plants. Okay. All the things you get want to grow together. So nice. we're going to start with a big, beautiful tomato. Okay. Consider the jewel Gorgeous. of the garden. Absolutely, everybody loves growing tomatoes, whether it's an heirloom big guy like this, or maybe it's a salad tomato or cherry tomatoes. Mm -hmm. They are the best, but tomatoes are fun. Fussy. And that's oh, part are. of the problem. Absolutely. And everybody's like, I can grow tomatoes easy. You can, but they want special buddies hanging out to grow even better. Right. They're so very with, exclusive. Exactly. They're so like with, a mean girl in the in the garden. Well, we don't want to say that, but yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so with your tomatoes, yeah. and you think about the Mexican restaurant, obviously peppers. We want yes. to put peppers in with tomatoes. Exactly. They okay. love the same growing conditions. Good. Same amount of light, same amount of care. So they really grow well together. But peppers actually stop insects from going after your tomato plants. Oh, perfect. Things like chipmunks, too, will not go through peppers to get to tomatoes because they don't like the smell of the leaves. Okay. So these guys want to grow together. Also, when you're thinking Mexican restaurant, I mean, yes. come on, you, you have to have onions. Onions. Yeah. onions and tomatoes and peppers, completely harmonious. They love growing oh, nice. together, absolutely. And onions stop hornworm, which is the number one thing that's gonna eat your tomato plants. Okay. So these are great for the tomatoes. I'm gonna put those down there. So like bodyguard, bodyguard, high maintenance. Exactly. Okay. We got the Whitney Houston right yeah. in the middle right here. Right in the exactly. middle, diva. <laughs> With those, yep. garlic, chives, any of those are gonna be part of this family. Bodyguard. Now you can't go to a Mexican restaurant without having good herbs, fresh yes. herbs, basil. These guys oh, all wanna nice. play together. In fact, for those condo dwellers out there, yeah. plant a tomato plant and put basil around it. The basil will protect the tomato. They love growing together. Basil actually helps the soil for the tomato as well. Oh, so it will grow nice. bigger and produce more fruit, okay. which is the key. Okay, is Diva doing anything for any of these people? She makes them look good. Okay. Let's just go with that, yeah, yeah. All also, right. cilantro, parsley, yes. all of the herbs we want to put there. So this, great in a planter bed together, great in a big okay. container, have some fun. Then you've got the other part of the garden. So we're just gonna yeah. put all these guys right over here. Okay, so this all is right. our Mexican Yeah, Mexican fiesta. fiesta. Down got the it. middle, we've got Switzerland. Where are the tacos? Just joking. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So down the middle, we've got Switzerland. These okay. are all the plants that can grow with pretty much anybody. They don't really care. All Things right. like kale is in there, lettuce, yep. spinach, leafy greens all tend to do really well. The one plant you want to put with these guys, though, yeah. believe it or not, are peas. And what are the peas gonna do? Peas are one of the only vegetables in the entire garden yeah. that actually put, puts more energy back into the soil than they take out. Oh. In fact, peas fix nitrogen in the garden and nitrogen helps leafy greens grow. Okay. So if you have peas planted near spinach, near lettuce, near kale, yeah. it really will take off and grow even better with less fertilizing. Now, if you decide you're not, like, if this isn't one of your favorite vegetables, does it still make sense to plant them? Absolutely. And these are give the ones you want to give them to your community. Yeah. Share with your neighbors because everybody can idea. use that. Absolutely. Very so nice. then let's talk about the Thanksgiving Day vegetables. Let's do now, it. Now, we know what a Thanksgiving Day table kind of looks like. We have yeah. a sort of an idea of what we like to grow there. Bountiful. We're going to start with beans. Now, beans, the reason we start with these, they're alleotropic. We're using Ooh, the big words today. Fancy. I know, right? Alleotropic means they secrete a toxin into the soil, a soil to stop competition. And the number one competitor for beans are tomatoes. So beans planted near tomatoes, beans will kill off the tomato Don't plant. Don't put them together. Don't do that, absolutely. In fact, if you've had beans growing in your garden in a spot for even up to two years, you can't plant that tomato for several years after that because the soil is toxified. So 
Beans are the problem child. They're toxic. They're, they're the bad ones out for yeah, many sorry reasons. Yeah, sorry to use an overused <laughs> yeah, exactly, TikTok term. Exactly. Yeah. So they're with toxic. the beans, though, we're going to put squash. Okay. Squash can handle beans. Yeah. Carrots do very well. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Nice. They can handle the squash, or okay. they, they can handle the beans. Other fun ones. Corn. Okay. Now you see where we're getting this Thanksgiving Day feast happening, yes. right? Cauliflower. Amazing. Good. They all grow so well together, and happily so. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. It would be nice to grow your own cauliflower. It's very expensive. And you need some space. Yeah, cauliflower does space. require space. I have seen dwarf varieties in, co in condos yeah. on balconies, so you can do it. You just have to find the right one. Got it. All right. Now there are some <laughs> plants that need to grow by themselves. Okay. Okay. Potatoes are a big loners. one. All right. Those are loners. They require so much energy and effort. Yeah. Asparagus, strawberries. These guys okay. are going to all be by themselves. Okay. Got it. When it comes to fruit, we're starting mm -hmm. to see more and more people growing food, fruit at home. Mm -hmm. So apples. The key to apples is plant another variety beside them. Oh, okay. Multiple varieties promote extra growth. Oh, good. Yeah. good Plums, to know. pears, these guys, they all want to just hang out by themselves. Yes. They're totally fine in Bunch the garden. Bunch of introverts. Ah, absolutely. We're yep. starting to see more and more people growing peaches. Mm. Peaches across the country are fantastic. So peaches with apricots and nectarines because they bloom at the same time. And speaking of flowers, yeah. make sure you put flowers in your garden. They bring in more pollinators. More pollinators means more produce to share with the community. Oh, wow. Yeah. So flowers with the food. Absolutely. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Carson. We're going to break. That was excellent. Thank more you. coming up. Stay with us. Let's get eaten. Coming up, Julia Grieve with a to die for DIY. You're going to need natural dyes. Okay. Okay, so we're not going to use any chemicals. We've got perfect eggs. We want to make the perfect dyes naturally. I love seeing that happiness in the audience. It's lovely. Well, spring is here. We want to celebrate it with a fun activity that is colorful and, of course, Sustainable. Julia Grieve is back with us right now. <laughs> what are we doing today? Okay, well, happy first day of spring. Yes, happy, happy beginning spring. of the spring season. Now, traditionally and historically, to sort of kick off the spring season, yeah. people used to give gifts to each other to celebrate the new season. Well, that's nice. I don't like that. And it was the gift of eggs. Oh, okay. Eggs, right? These days, I will take it. I know, right? Here's a dozen <laughs> eggs. Um, no, but really, because eggs symbolize new life, new beginning, yes. new season. So it's kind of really perfect, it right? Makes sense. As well. And then spring also kicks off the beginning of Earth Month, right? right. Which starts on Earth Hour, which is the third Sunday in March. Okay. okay. So now Earth Hour is an incredible global initiative. Yeah. And the concept is turning off your lights for one hour, 8 30 to 9 30 p.m. Mm -hmm. local time. Yes. Okay, and the concept, I love it, Tracy. The whole concept behind it is one little small thing that we do alone, if we all do it together, the massive impact. Absolutely. Right? And when you look outside during that Earth Hour, it's very cool. It's, it's very gorgeous. dark. Gorgeous. And which every is nice. year, more and more people are participating and getting yeah. into it. So, what I have today is ideas of how we can decorate eggs if yeah. you want to give them as gifts to hit off spring. Nice. If it's something we want to do, you know, during Earth Hour. Okay. Or if it's just something you want to get ready for, for Easter. But let's do it Beautiful. as sustainable as possible. Let's do that. So we're going to do it in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> Why exactly. not? Exactly. I mean, right. so. You can do this by candlelight. What, <laughs> are, what are we going to do? Okay, so there's a few things that you're going to need before you get started. Yeah. Obviously, you're going to need your eggs. Right. And I talk about this all the time, Tracy. I always say small changes can have huge impact. Yeah. Something as simple as your eggs. Okay. Right? I'm yeah. obsessed with Burnby Farms. Oh, me too. Right? Yeah. They're the largest uh, you know, Canadian egg family-run farm, mm -hmm. which I love. They've got mm -hmm. solar powered farms and yeah. they're committed to being net zero carbon admissions by 20 50, Beautiful. Which is around the corner. And I know they'll make it. Right? Yeah, so I love that. Then you're going to need natural dyes. Okay. Okay? So we're not going to use any chemicals. We've got the perfect eggs. We want to make the perfect dyes naturally. So yeah. what better way to do that than with food scraps mm -hmm. and things you have lying around the house? There are things that are all natural that create beautiful colors. You've so, got some gorgeous colors I know, colors right? Here. So I'm going to go through them and tell you what you got, what's easiest to work. Right. Turmeric, one of my absolute favorites. Oh, I mean, good. that color is gorgeous. Yeah. It, you know, got to be careful. Stay your hands, your fingers, your, crap, your counter, everything. everything. But it'll stain an egg, I promise you. <laughs> so that's a really beautiful one to use. Beets is another mm -hmm. one. Now, a beet will give you almost like a light red, almost more like in a Merlot color, right? Okay. So that's really beautiful. Yep. Coffee. 
This is my big nemesis. Why do people throw out coffee? Don't throw it out. Yeah. Turn it into, put it into ice cubes, put it in the freezer, use it for uh, shakes. Oh, I like right? that. Right? Put it in a jar, put it in the fridge, use it for dye, yes. use it for cold brew. Do not throw out your coffee. Okay. Sorry, it's, I'm sorry. I, yeah, no, I get emotional I, I about understand. these things. She cares, sorry about she that. cares. <laughs> yeah. And then cabbage <laughs> is another one. Cabbage yeah. is like your super color food. Yes. This, I mean, I always laugh. Shocking. I always have cabbage left over in my house. <laughs> I With wonder three why. teenagers. <laughs> they're like, Mom, get rid of it. <laughs> so anyways, that's what you can do. So the recipe to create the dye bath is very simple, Trace. Yep. It's basically two cups water and whatever amount of food you have. Bring that to a boil. Let it go for about 20 minutes. Uh -huh. Strain and ba-boom, you've got a dye bath. Oh, beautiful. Okay. All natural. Yes. So what you're going to do, though, to make the dye bath sit and really work to, to sort of like a heast to the eggs, mm -hmm. you're going to need to add vinegar. So about okay. a tablespoon of vinegar for each one. Mm -hmm. And that basically, not to get too sciencey on you, but it basically puts the pH level so that it will stick to the egg. Good. Right? Now, right. vinegar is also a very fun tool. So do this before the lights go out. Yeah. Okay? So we've got cabbage here. So when you have cabbage on its own, it's almost this dark purple, right? Yeah. And it dyes really beautifully Beautiful. dark purple. But if you put a little vinegar, you're going to watch this? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Come on. What's happened? Oh, it went to like a red. Right? That's so Isn't cool. Isn't that so cool? So yeah. that will dye red. Then nice. if we do the same thing here, and we're gonna put baking soda this time into okay. the cabbage, and you're gonna watch. It's now gonna what turn. Color are we gonna get? It's gonna get oh, a blue, it's blue. Right? A blue or a green. Oh my gosh, so, the kids will love right? this. Right? Yeah. So then just from cabbage, you can create the three colors. Yeah, I love that. Right? Superfood, I tell you. Superfood. Cool. Exactly. Cabbage, inexpensive, and it'll last you forever. So it's actually worth buying for those right? reasons, too. Yes. I love that. Right. Okay, so we have all of our dyes. Right. Now we gotta deal with the eggs. Right. So okay. what are we doing to the we, eggs? We're gonna make these as gifts, so we are going to hard boil the Smart. eggs. Smart. Okay, now yeah. I have to ask you. Yes. How do you hard boil your egg? Oh my gosh, I hope I get this right. I okay, so I put no them fair. in the I put them in the pan or the pot and then it goes to a boil and I leave it boiling for a couple of minutes and then I turn off the heat and I leave it there for about twenty minutes. That sounds good to you? Yeah. Okay, okay good. I'm gonna say that Because it's in the kitchen, you know I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm gonna say that that is very close. Okay. I mean, I'll take I, it. I'm not the professional here, but I do have my idea. But wait, Randy, how do you uh, what? How do you hard boil an egg? What's the thing? I you're know, you're pretty darn close. You're okay. pretty darn close. Okay. Um, wide saucepan. Yes. Inch of water above. Oh. Cold water. Put your eggs in. I do these things. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Bring it up to a hard boil. Yeah. Yes. Lid on. Kill the heat. Yes. Okay. Okay. Nine. Yes. Nine. To 12 minutes. Nine is kind of like, you know, a little oh, softer. That, that was mine. Okay. I was going to say that. That's the trick. Nice it's turning off okay. the heat. Turn it off the heat. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, yeah. So, once we have the eggs perfectly hard boiled, yeah. now we can literally just dye them. Okay. okay? So, let's, so dye let's them. do that. So, Really, what you're going to do, Trace, is you're going to pick whatever color you want. You drop it into there. Yeah. As long, the longer you leave it in the natural dye, the more pigment it will. Pigment. Pigment. Thank yes, you. Yes. It's a picnic It'll be like and a, saturated right, color. Right. Exactly. You it, yeah. But you know what you can do, Trace, is put elastics around the egg if you can, oh. and then you can put them in, and then that'll make interesting designs on it, I which like is really that fun. idea. And then this one I saw, and I loved it. Is this is like a basil leaf. So we're just gonna put a leaf on the egg oh, like that. Oh, you're gonna make yours artsy, right? artsy. Okay, and then That's we're gonna nice. take a pantyhose, if you can find pantyhose these yeah. days. And then you're just <laughs> going to put it over it so that the this would stay on straight. Oh, that's going to be so let's lovely if the leaf will stay. But you know yeah. what? Even if it's a little Well, that's the idea. Up, like, whatever. Even that, the interesting shape like that. Yeah. And then you would tie that straight like I that. I did mine like a hot cross bun. Oh, my God. That's perfect. I love hot cross buns. I love it. So then you'll just put it into whatever color you would want. And um, then I can just show you. Okay, what, what color you want? I'm going to do this one. Okay, now go slowly. Don't drop it down. We don't want it to crack. But here, yeah, go. Go. You got it. All right, there we go. Okay, okay. now I'm going to show Ooh, you, Trace. Oh, that smells like sewage. I know. Shh, it's cabbage. <laughs> okay. It's cabbage. Okay. It's natural. I know. It's natural. But look we at that color. It. Look at that. Oh, look at the already. blue. Already. I know, right? That's beautiful. So that will make a great nice. blue. Yeah. And then, Trace, if you want to see here, let's show all the colors oh, that you can get in the eggs. That's pretty. Right? Look at that. So each one is different. Like, that's the tumor. Yes. There you go. You know what? And they look natural and organic and they're beautiful and they're a lovely gift. They so are. there's your that. little gift, eh? <gasps> Eggs, everything. I'd like you to go home and make a blue egg salad sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 
there's also wine. <laughs> there Aaron, you go. thank you. <laughs> Happy Easter. Let's go to break. I love it. Be right back. <laughs> Coming up, bougie butter is the best. Well, it's three times more money, but it's mm -hmm. it's four or five, maybe six times better than regular butter. Very Give it good. to your kids. Don't waste it on your kids. <laughs> All right. We're back and we're talking butter. Uh, I think most people like butter. If you don't, yes, I'm judging you. <laughs> Chef Randy Feltes is back because you feel very strongly about butter. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> and there's like different, there's different levels of butter. Like, I don't know if people really know, but yeah, there is like butter starts at amazing and yes. just gets better. And better and better and, and better. better and better. Okay, so we are gonna, you're gonna give me a bit of a butter tour. Yes. And then you're going to show us, you know, your go-to sandwich or what they're doing in <laughs> France and what you like to do as well, because I'd never heard of this before. Well, it is a spring show, right? Yes. And so radishes are the very first vegetable to pop out of the ground, yeah. 21 to 28 days. Here they go, ooh, there you go. And in France, what they do is they take their expensive butter and they dip it in, the radish in, and that's like a little, Amuse or a little like hors d'oeuvre, and it's okay. just like radish with the best butter. Oh just my god! Just radish and butter, and it's the best thing you ever ate in your life. So okay. a radish butter sandwich is along those lines, maybe a little bit more North American kind of thing. I just need to hear: Has anyone <laughs> heard of a radish and butter sandwich here? Oh, okay, so man. I'm getting a lot of no's. Well, today. that's okay. That's okay because we're all going <laughs> to learn together. Me neither. I'm with you. <laughs> okay. So first thing I want you to do is taste the regular butter. Don't mind you if know, I do. Nothing wrong with this. It's been getting expensive. Lately, if you see it on sale, it's like six bucks. It might get up to eight bucks. Mm -hmm. We, like, I was like, grew up on a farm, so we were farmers. We had it's butter. Good. We weren't margarine people. That never happened. I didn't know that that world existed. I grew up with margarine. I'm glad Sorry. you made the conversion. I've right? Switched. Okay, she switched. She's I've on switched. the right team now, everybody. It's amazing. Margarine. Okay, that was delicious. That's delicious. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that, right? And a good chef will use a bit of butter. A great chef uses like half a cup more. Okay. Okay, just yeah. so we know where we're at. Right. So this is a super interesting butter. This is cow's creamery out of PEI. And what they do is they do things the old school way. So they mm. churn the butter slower and they get the percentage of butter fat up. This is 84% butter fat, oh. where a regular butter would be 80%. Okay. And what I really love about this one, they have the salted and the unsalted, but this one's extra special because it's cultured. So they actually add some like kind of yogurt bacteria in there. Yes. And so it just gives it this incredible zing. And it's like unlike any butter you've ever tasted in your Life, Tracy. Oh my God! And once you what try it, <laughs> once you try it, you're gonna okay. be like, "Okay, is this the salted or the unsalted?" This is salted, okay. cultured, so it's gonna have a lot of flavor salted as far as a butter goes. Oh yeah. And I mean, like, look at the wrapper. That's different. That's very different really? than the first butter I tried. <laughs> right? It's very good. It's got some zing. It's rich. Rich. It's creamy. It's glorious, right? It's Where's the bread Julia got me? <laughs> <laughs> I brought lots of bread. I brought lots the of bread. The whole thing, and like, put that butter on it. It's great. So now, there's more. There's more. It gets, it gets, it gets better. better. It gets better. Now the cows is going to retail around nine, ten dollars for half a pound. Don't faint. Don't it's, faint. It's special. I know it's twice as much. Well, it's three times more money, but mm -hmm. it's it's four, five, maybe six times better than regular butter. You just have to keep that in mind. It is. Don't give it good. to your kids. Don't waste it on your kids. <laughs> All right. This is a bottle of red wine and a it's husband not thing. For them. Yes, it is true. St. Bridget is, this is the butter. This is okay. certified organic, A2, 100% Jersey cattle and single farm raised. So this is just oh. one farm. They don't source it out. They, they grow and they pasteurize and it's out on eating grass. So Everything this on, is uh, from one farm. One so farm, you're gonna one have to family. Pay for this. Little, well, you know, you're gonna have to pay for butter. Oh, God, pay for but this. check out this color. Ooh. All natural. Ooh, that beautiful right? yellow. So A2 is the heavy protein because it's the Jersey cow nice. and it is bright, bright, bright yellow. 84% butter fat and it's even a little bit firmer like when you push it. Oh my lord. Oh wow. Oh boy. That's Tracy. a lot of butter. It's like, I'm giving you a big bite. Yes, thank it's okay. you. It's okay. It's like a butter <laughs> sandwich, you know what I mean? This is like, this is how you eat this stuff. That's very good. <laughs> So, now this could be a bit of a chef thing, but every chef 
eats butter sandwiches in the morning. The bread comes out of the oven. Yeah. They just take a thick slice of butter. There's nothing better. There's nothing better. And it's like, it doesn't even need to be toasted. It's just kind of warmed. And you don't want it melting. You actually want the butter yeah. to be kind of firm and still creamy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then what we're going to do wow. is we're just going to take that butter. Oh, it's so gorgeous. So the radish part. The radish. Is Listen, th those thought? butters go down very smooth. Oh, they're too very smooth. good. And so we brought these into um, our new shop. Yeah. And I brought, I guess, two cases in. I was a little worried because we're retailing it for thirteen dollars for half a pound. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if our little small town is going to be into this. Yeah. We sold out in two days. Oh. Within posting it on Instagram, people were calling. You got it left. It's like we posted it eighteen minutes ago. Wow. And they came running in the door. And I think everyone has a little bit of a soft spot for butter because it's special. It's just special, and this is a treat. Like oh, I said, yes, hit it don't with the give tail. it to the kids, right? And then we just go a little don't bit. Don't give it to the don't kids. Don't give it to the kids. No, it's special. Um, if you want to make some croissants with it, that's cool. Yeah. We had one client. He came in. He got, he got it for his mom, and she made shortbread cookies with it. Oh. That's beautiful. You know what? This is this is looking better and better. <laughs> the more I look at it, it's looking gorgeous. So then we got the unsalted butter there. So we're gonna hit it with a little flaky salt, a yeah. little bit of radish, a little bit of dill. I'm just gonna show everybody how that looks before I completely demolish it. You gonna get into that? There you go. Oh my god. All right, Cass, how much time do I have? 30 seconds <laughs> to bite into my radish and butter sandwich. I gotta make it a good bite. Oh, Jesus. Mm. That's so good. Does the radish work? Does the radish work? The radish That's works. That's springtime, isn't it? It's so good. <laughs> I should... It's really good. It's really good. <laughs> go home and try a butter sandwich, everybody. You're going to love it. Thank you so much, Randy. Let's go to break. More coming up. Is this how they eat it? That's how they eat it. Coming up, I'm all about taking care of your house plants, unless there's worms. There's no trick to this. Are those worms? No, 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 those are roots. You know, as the seasons change, so do our plant needs. So we took a trip to Carson's greenhouse, and he shared all of his tips on taking care of our indoor plants during the winter. Let's take a look. All right, we're going to talk about three common problems that your house plants are having at this time of year. Now, the first problem is called chlorosis, when the leaves are starting to get all this yellow modeling. Now, on some plants, it's natural, and that happens, but on this particular pothos, this is because it's not too happy. Now, there's three things to check. Often, you'll get that type of modeling when you're over or under watering. So first, check the soil. In this case, Soil's pretty dry, which means it's not overwatered, and pothos, by its nature, doesn't really like a lot of water. So that's about right. The next thing to consider, though, is how much sunlight it's getting. At this type of year, or this time of year, when there's lots of cloud cover and it's really gray, your plants aren't getting enough light, and they start to look just like that. Chlorosis sets in. So there's a couple things you can do. The first, I love using a little bit of blood meal. Blood meal is high in nitrogen. Nitrogen helps in the photosynthesis process. It also adds to cell development and it helps build the green in the leaves, which is what your need, leaves need to produce more energy. Secondary thing I like to do, I like to add a little artificial light. If you have a desk lamp or you can put this closer to a brighter window, the plant will be happier. It's not a long-term thing, just until sunlight levels outside naturally get brighter. Second problem, when do you fertilize your plants? Now, this is really tricky because it's so dependent on the plant. This little money tree here looks fantastic, but what it's starting to do is it's sending up new growth. See, there's a new little leaf there. When your plants are sending up new growth, they're using extra energy. They need lots of energy to develop that new growth, which means it's time to Fertilize your plants, and I love using a house plant specific fertilizer. It's kind of like an all purpose fertilizer. In this case, it's a synthetic, which means it's going to be absorbed quickly by the plant. I'm not consuming this plant, so I'm not as worried about it. The little fertilizer at this time of year, when it's going through new growth, will help it in the long run. And finally, and probably the most common, is the palm trees right now. Now, this is a beautiful palm variety, and I'm going to take this leaf off right here to show you what's going on. See that? 
browning at the tips of the leaves. Very common for houseplants right now. And it has everything to do with the fact that our homes at this time of year are significantly drier. Not a lot of moisture in the air, especially if you have forced heating where the air is blowing out of your vents. Couple things to do. You can increase your watering a little bit. That's fine for the plant. More importantly, move it away from a vent. Do not let the wind blow on this. That nice warm breeze that we think is good for the plants are actually drying them out. The other thing you can consider is adding a humidifier to the bottom of the plant. Adding a little humidity into the room will stop this browning, but more importantly, it'll make the space feel a little nicer for you to live in at the same time. Very cool. Okay, so we got them all prepped for winter. Uh, let's get them ready for spring. Right. Right? So now it's time to make that transition and get them ready for spring. Do you love spring? I do, and I do for different reasons. Okay. Spring is new life, new growth, all mm. exciting. It's time to repot, to really refresh, yeah. which I love that part of it. That's okay, exciting for beautiful. me. beautiful. So let's repot some plants today. So let's do that. Okay. We've got to look at why they might need to be repotted and how to do it. Right. So we're going to start with orchids first, because at this time of year, <laughs> everybody's like, why are my orchids blooming? What's yeah. going on? Like, we buy them, and they look like this, yep. and then we bring them home and after a few months they look like this all of them right every single one, every of, single every one of them. ever brought so we're going to talk about what you should remove and what you shouldn't first of all so the okay. first thing that we are going to remove is this spent flower stem now if it's brittle and crunchy and it just snaps off oh. it's not coming back this is dead okay. dead is dead when it comes to plants they don't revive these so we're going to take that mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. all of these guys though are aerial rootlets now orchids are epiphytes I'm using all the big terms mm -hmm. today epiphytes mean they grow in harmony with the another organism and in this case okay. orchids love to grow with trees so these never touch the soil they grow in the crotch of a tree where two branches come together oh. and these aerial rootlets are designed to absorb humidity and moisture so this is how an orchid gets watered but if all the rootlets are out here yeah. not getting a lot of water unless you're misting it so we're gonna actually transplant it now okay there's no trick to this Oh, you just pull it out. You just pull it out. Okay. And you're going to see not a lot of roots in here. Are those worms? No, 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 no. Those are roots. <laughs> Tracy, <laughs> memory, I don't like worms. What are you doing? Okay. There's no real roots in here. You see this? There's yeah. nothing in there. It's There's just nothing. the moss, right? Okay. All of the root is up here. Okay. okay. So when we repot this, we're going to put it in a pot that's a little bit deeper because that was too shallow. So we're going to go in this pot a little deeper. You'll notice it doesn't have a hole in the bottom. Right. It does not matter for orchids. They don't care oh. about oats, water in the bottom, provided you're watering properly. Okay. The number one way to kill an orchid, miswater it. Is so, it overwatering yeah, it? Yeah, overwatering it or just not watering it at all, oh, ignoring okay. it completely. So I like to put all this back in. It has yeah. no purpose other None. than it's just filling the bottom of the pot. Okay, then I'm gonna put in some bark. Now orchids, because they're tree epiphytes, they like tree bark. Oh. So orchid bark that you purchase is actually just bark. I've been doing it all wrong. You could also use mulch. Yeah, okay. anything that's not dyed, organic, absolutely use mulch in your orchid planters. Got it. Don't use soil. No, no soil, soil ever for orchids. So we're okay. gonna put lots of that down in there. Yeah. Soil is bad, soil rots it out. We're gonna put it down, and we're gonna put the aerial rootlets in a little bit here. We're gonna tuck them in. They don't all have to go in, yeah, because it's gonna naturally grow out anyways, but by tucking it in, and then putting all the bark down in around it, we're gonna secure it in place, which is how it wants to be. This is how it likes to be. It likes mm -hmm. to be crowded in that pot. Mm -hmm. Then, on top of that, we're gonna put moss. Nice. Now, the reason I like to put moss in is when you're watering your orchid, the moss holds more moisture than the wood chips. Got so it. you know when to water when the moss is dry. So now you know exactly when it's time to water your orchid by filling the moss. And you're going to water just the top surface. Okay. So you're going to splash water around the top to soak the moss. The orchid will now absorb all the moisture from the moss itself. So smart. Easy, so simple, and now okay. it's happy and it's going to take off and do its own thing. Beautiful. So Tracy, let's talk about houseplants. And I've made a mess because you know that's, that's what I like okay. to do. Yeah, that's, that's my favorite. That's what the blankie's for. Let's talk about houseplants. Let's talk about houseplants. All right, at this time of year, your houseplants are going through a bit of a metamorphosis. <laughs> right. Uh, this little <laughs> aloe. <laughs> It's been a long winter, It's right? had a rough season. So this aloe has died back because it hasn't had enough sunlight, right? So it needs more sunlight in its life. And that's what's happening right now is we're starting to see more sun. The intensity's gone up. The aloe's starting to come back. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pull this apart. I'm going to try and show this to the camera here. This is a little baby aloe shoot right there. Yeah. So when you see that, you know your plant's not dead. Okay. Even though it looks as bad as it does, it's yeah. not dead. So what you would do is we're going to just prune out all the dead stuff. We don't yeah. need anything dead because dead in plants is 
dead. It's not dead. coming back, exactly. Yeah. So we're gonna prune that off. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this out. It's wedged right in there. No mercy. Feel how tight it is? I know. That means it's really pot bound. So when it's pot bound, I'm Tracy. I'm afraid I'm gonna pull the plant right out without the roots. When it's pot bound, Tracy. Yes. Oh. Yeah, there is times where you're gonna have to smack it. Yeah, and this is one of those. So Tracy. So bye bye to the pot. Can you pot. crack that pot? Are, Say goodbye. Are you sure you want your hand there? Yes, I do. Woo! Done. Perfect. That was satisfying. Yeah, right? Yes. So here's why it was so important to get it out of that pot. Yeah. There's a little, uh, a lower section on the pot that was locking the plant in, and okay. it's completely wedged in there. All these roots are so jammed in, it's now starting to girdle, which means the roots are going round and round. Mm. It will eventually choke itself off. Oh. So we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're just actually cut some of these roots. Oh, you can do yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. Because when you prune the roots like this, yeah. it promotes new growth. So new growth is exactly what we want in spring because we have lots of sunlight. Okay. Now another pot that has a similar problem. Trace, put your glasses back on. We're doing it again. Okay. You'll notice that this pot. If we must. Very classic look. It's yeah. scalloped in tighter at the, the throat than actually down the sides. This pot is wedged. It See is not. That? Yeah. So you, you couldn't take it out no matter what. There's it no way to get in. it out. Exactly. And this plant keeps falling over because it's right. now growing sideways. So Tracy, crack a pot. Ready? Go for it. You oh, got it. I got it. Nice in oh, one shot. Nice. Perfect, yeah. So well, it's another good reason to pull I'm this out. I'm enjoying that too much. <laughs> I'm gonna go home and bust all my plants. Fair enough. Now you'll notice this one doesn't have the same root system. Right. It's not as intense. This is part of the succulent family. Succulents grow in deserts, uh -huh. kind of like the aloe, but in this case, very shallow rooted. Okay. It doesn't need a big pot. So if you're gonna go up a size, you could go that big. It would mm -hmm. be totally fine. Mm -hmm. Be happy in there. The soil, though, is so important. When we're choosing soil for your tropicals, I want you to go with a nice, light, fluffy tropical mix. Uh -huh. This is not what you get in the backyard. There's no topsoil involved. A lot of perlite and vermiculite makes it light and fluffy. Mm -hmm. The reason you want this, it does a better job holding moisture. It is not wet and heavy. Very smart to use this stuff. Got and it. So get the right soil or it's not going to thrive Exactly. As well. And two yeah. other things to be paying attention to with your plants yep. is if you've got roots coming out the bottom like this, Oh yeah. you know you're getting close. Pulled it's time to repot us. that. Yep. Absolutely see that big root coming out of there. Mm -hmm. You're going to take that one out. And finally, if your plant has warped the pot, yeah. it's like completely warped it, yeah. I'm going to try and get this out of here. Oh, oh, nice. Look at that. This guy Aww. needs a new home. He's he got does. a lot He's in there. He's thriving, and though. There's babies. But he needs more. There's babies coming out the side. Aww. Yeah, aww. so this is a guy that we need to repot as well. Now's so the bigger. time to do it. Bigger pot for him. Yeah. We could even cut it up if we wanted to make extra babies for the guests and the neighbors. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, Share simple. your plans. <laughs> that was so fun. What can I break now? I'm afraid to ask. We got to go to break. We got more coming up. Stay with us. Ah. <laughs> There's just something so fun. something for these lovely people. So tomorrow is International Day of Happiness, which is nice. It's good to have a reason to be happy. And our friends at Skip the Dishes, these folks, want to make spreading joy a little easier. So to celebrate the launch of Starbucks on the Skip app, everyone in our studio audience is going to go home with a $50 Skip gift card. So you can treat yourself or a loved one, which is really nice. I think it's a nice gift to give people sometimes. Like yeah. here, yeah. take this and then buy yourself some dinner, right? It's butter. Oh, you want <laughs> butter, some butter. <laughs> Jules, Randy, Carson, it was so good to have you on the show. Thanks, I just ate my way through the whole hour. Right. It was Perfect. such hard work, let me tell you. Really? Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to all of our viewers at home uh, for joining us here and tuning in to watch me eat bread. Um, and all of our studio audience, you're lovely.